I think we are rolling. Yes, online. All right, fantastic. Well, before we start, I just wanted to say to my friend, Simon, who just had a baby, congratulations. And Freddy, welcome to this world. All right, let's start.
All right, let's start. How are you guys? All right. So let's get down to it. Here we go. All right. So today we're going to talk about this action cue. Just going to hit play. Um, also, let me know if you can hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me. I can hear you. Awesome. Mark, thank I you. can't see you. Can't see you. You cannot see me. Okay, thank you, you guys. In Zoom, here's what I'm going to do. Um, share screen. And I'm going to share this one. And you should be able to see me now. Yes. All right, let's move this here. So this is a track. It's going to sound a little bit better on in the Facebook stream. By the way, talking about Facebook, I'm going to move these here so I can monitor the two Facebooks. And I'm going to just refresh and refresh. And um, I'm just going to hit play. Uh, so you get an idea of the sound of this track. It's action, high intensity type of thing. Um, lots of things going on. I'm gonna. Uh, what, uh, the process is going to be, first, I'm going to explain roughly the libraries that I've used. Second, I'm going to go uh, section by section and explain exactly sort of like what was the problem that I was having musically, how, resol how I resolved the problem. Transition, next, next problem, and resolution sort of thing. Um, the only thing is because it's action high intensity sections there's so so many changes, right? So there, are, it's not as like a section. It's gonna be sometimes like three bars, right? Sometimes a little bit longer, right? So here we go. All right, so that's it. That's what we've got. Now there's quite a lot going on. Not not that much, but um, not that much. But but it, it can get complex in some sections. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open slides so I can uh, MTCM this one. I'm gonna move it here, and I'm just gonna create an empty one here. New blank. Or, even better, I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move it up here. Ah. So, libraries. So, this is for, so for the strings. Just, 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 so, just so it can move faster. Because if I had to go one by one explaining and showing exactly what library I used. But just so you know, the, the um, m most of what I used was... Uh, as Spitfire, Symphonic Strings, Cine Samples, Cine Strings, and um, and that's about it, all right? Um, so, now, whenever you see some sort, when you see this, then this is uh, Cine Samples, Cine Strings, all right? So this is Cine Strings. When you see something that says violins, one articulation short, it's going to be Cine Strings. When you see violins, art articulation short, Strings room mics, right? Room mics. When you see the C, then this means C strings. Um, a little bit, um, um, closer sound, closer sound, and um, and then I'm gonna show you exactly what closer sound would mean. I'm gonna go here. Um, 
And so, for example, in this case, what is this? Closure sound. Right. So you can hear the violins in the wrong place. Yeah, right place. All right. So this guy here, we're going to close this. Can we close this? Yes. Are you? One sec. Um, we have to go here. Here. There you go. So this this kind of thing. So it's close. There's close. Um, mic. It's a little bit of room mic. All right. So that is violins one. When it's the short articulations, it's the roomy setting. In um, this is same. See, this is the roomy roomy setting. I know it's super super small. Just trust me on this one. Um, it says roomy, and it's the the setting where basically they just have the deca tree and white and surround mics. It's like the typical setup, like what you would hear in the room. Okay, so that's that. All right. So when you see um, whatever violin one articulation short, it's gonna be the room mics. When you see short C, um, it's a little bit of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Let me see. Oh no! How can I do this? If I come here and then I. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what I'll do? If I do this, and I do one, four. All right, yes. One second, let me do this so you can see. I'm gonna minimize this guy here. I'm gonna close this guy here. I'm gonna come on the cuadro. So this is a bit like close. One second. It'll make sense when I finish when I'm done. Uh, close. Copy. All right. And now if I go here, paste. All right. All right. You get the idea. All right. And I'm going to move this down here. And I'm going to put this here. All right. And uh, this one, room mics. Now, when you see this, then this means um, soup. You see the asterisks, the asterisk. Then like this, it means super super close and super close. Like hopefully I can do this. Um, right. So. Super close, and I am using L, um, LA scoring strings. So not library. It's, it's close. It's um, it's it sounds closer than um, cinematic scoring strings, and I use this one because I wanted this sound. And the why I've got the different positions, I'll explain it in a second. And the reason why I know that I could control potentially I could control the the different mics here is like, but sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes I don't want to have just one library and being able to control the different mics. Sometimes I, I, I want to have a library that sounds bigger in the bigger room and then adding a second library that has a bit more definition or more aggression or more attack or whatever is more um, clarity, or whatever it is, and, um, and the closure sound and deciding between the two libraries how much of each I want or three libraries. Sometimes, depending on the type of sound. Now, understand that this is not I'm going for a realistic sound all the time. Sometime I'm going for the effect of having these strings farther away and then bringing them closer and then moving them farther away again as, 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 um, as, a, as, a, as a part of music development, right? When it comes to music development, we've got melodic development, we've got a harmonic development, we've got orchestration and then production itself, right? We can, we can repeat the same idea musically and then add variations, right? We could reorchestrate it and all these things, but then we can also change the production, right? We can move these sounds closer, farther away. We can, so that's what I'm doing sometimes when I need to. Just want to bring the orchestra or specifically the strings closer in your face for a specific moment. So then, so then I can contrast with that sound and big epic orchestra again. All right. So that's why I've got this set up. All right. But I wanted to get this out of the way first. So you understand. So it makes sense. 
All right, so when I'm using this, uh, it's LA scoring strings. So let's scoring strings and um, other strings. Uh, um, symphony. Ah, symphonic strings. So that's for the strings, right? For brass, I use Cine brass. For woodwinds, um, I use. Uh, Mark, we are not seeing you. I mean, we are not seeing the slides. We are seeing you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Um, Lay scoring strings for the strings. Speed, um, speed five symphonic strings for brass in the brass for woods. Um, holly. Wood winds, um, Hollywood winds uh, from Cine samples again, and sometimes I've got some um, symphobia. Sometimes symphobia, it's so like your rips. Symphobia. That's. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. So that's sort of like the core of what I've got for percussion. For percussion, percussion, I've got um, uh, uh, Spitfire. Most of the times, right? So that's for the strings, brass, woods, percussion. All right. So nothing new for those who who know me. Um, the piano. I'm gonna duplicate this guy here. Yes, so I'm not gonna write here for the piano. Oops. One more time. For piano, piano is the um, sound diagram. Emotional. All right. And that is about it. That's about it. If there are any specific things that I don't include in this document, I will mention it. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go section by section, and I'm going. Well, we have a um, a link to that one. Yes. Yes, I can give you a link to this one. It is um, the link will change, okay? Because this is okay. another another slides, but um, yeah, sure. And then. Mm, can be okay. Here we go. One sec. Tap more. Tap paste. So here's the link for Zoom guy, you guys, and and here the slides for Facebook and for Facebook. All right. Cool. So that's that. Um, let's start. First section. All right, one more time. Go here. In fact, what I'm going to do, something that I don't usually do, but I'm going to go here so I don't have a shortcut for this. Um, show tracks with data in the locators. All right, yeah, a few more tracks, cool. All right, so basically, so what I wanted here is like the, it's like a big entrance, here I come, right? Energy, power, this is a big Q type of thing. So I created that with sort of that brass sound. So my idea is like, this is gonna be um, orchestral. Um, still, I want some hybrid elements just for energy punch aggression, okay? So initially my idea was big brass inception type of sound, uh, a little bit more aggressive if possible. And so um, that's what I created, um, but I wanted a little bit more energy, so I, so basically what you're gonna see is low brass, long nose, and also some brums from Audio Imperia, okay? Um, so that's the first thing, the wah at the beginning. I'm gonna show it in a second. Now, 
it also has a, a punch or something at the beginning to, to, to add to the attack of that note at the beginning. All right, so we've got brass here, and I use the Cine Brass Pro Monster Brass Patch, this guy here, just one note. Sounds like this. Right, it gives it, it creates, it gives it that realistic or casual big brass sound. Uh, but then what actually enhances this is this Brahms here. Now the way this works is I'm gonna open it. Okay, cool. Right. So there are two notes, right? The first one, which is long Brahms. The second one has this pulse. So I created this pulse here, right? I went in here and I created this motion. And you can, and you can, here, and you can um, do that note by note in this library. So one of the notes is just sustained, the other one I added this uh, LFO to create a wah, 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 wah in volume. And it, um, because I needed to, to start creating this sort of like pulse, this is the tempo, this is how the track is going to go, sort of thing. So I wanted that. So that's the library right here. Um, what else do we have? We got a punch here. Um, again, I think it's all the Imperia. Um, and then we've got the timpani. Timpani important, sort of like gives this entrance. And then it goes down, you see? It goes down. So, so here's, a, here's one thing. When, when we talk about composition comes first and then goes mixing, we compose. When I'm composing, I, I'm composing with the mix in mind. Even though if I've got time, I'll be composing um, and then I will be mixing. When I'm composing, I want to make sure that my life is going to be easy when I'm mixing. I don't want to be dealing with problems. So here, what, what we've got is first note, ta ta boom. Because I, with a, with a cue like this, we're gonna have uh, decay, decay conflicting. We're gonna, we're, gonna, there, we're gonna have so much going on that at some point it may get muddy. It may, we may lose clarity. And so I remember um, a while ago I mixed Molly's track um, and literally what I, what I did is like, the, there was like these big drums sounded great, but there was so much more stuff on top of that. And so basically I started cleaning. I, and I was mixing. It was a, it's a one, two hours class and I couldn't finish the mix. But what I did, and this is very common, um, it's uh, I grabbed that truck and it just, I started cutting the decays, cutting, cutting, cutting and chopping and getting rid of the decays and then adding a fade out, quick fade out. So the, so, so, so we get the big hit, but we don't get the tail and the room and all that. Right. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, just I just want the effect, da dam boom, entrance, and then out, right? And it goes like this, right? So da dam down, ra down, ra. So so you see you see what we are doing here. We want the effect, but we also want the um, uh, the efficiency, right? We want to be efficient in everything that we do here. So everything has to serve a purpose. And uh, I'll show the screen in a second. Um, everything has to serve a purpose. And if we don't want it, if this element is not helping the idea for this section, then out. All right. I'm going to show this one more time. So. All right. Same thing. And depending on how exposed this beat is, then the decay needs to sound more natural or we can cut it right away. This one, for example, the first one, there's so much going on that I don't care if I, if it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound realistic. Like there, it would sound different if they would, if, if, if the musician would stop the timpani, it would, it, the decay would be different. This is clearly volume out, volume down, right? Uh, but I don't care because the truth is there's so much more going on. So I, I don't hear that decay. I don't hear how it fades out. All right, so that's it. All right, so we've got 
the entrance and then we've got the next section the next section basically i just want to build um so it goes goes up 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 we've got this ah he switches one second I'm gonna play this one more time so you can hear. Try to identify the different layers, okay? All right, so there are there are many. Let's focus on the three three main layers. We've got the higher strings going up. This part here. All right, we've got this. We've got the big hits with the brass and and, and timpani. Like downbeat sort of thing with the with the low brass and timpani, uh, which is here. Uh, it's gonna be monster brass, I bet. This guy here and the timpani. So, so you can you can see it here. And then the timpani, you can see the timpani hit here. So these two, right, and a few more, but. <laughs> So we've got these two elements, and then, uh, and then we've got we introduce for the first time the motif. There is a motif going on, and uh, which is this guy here. And I wanted to make sure that even though it's it's, it's a busy cue, um, this first time I wanted to present it um, in a way that doesn't throw you out of the mix, but the, at least you can hear it right now. It's um, it's in the mid range. We've got the high strings going up. We've got the the big hits. Um, we've got, and then we've got the horns presenting the theme, uh, not the theme, the motif, which is this guy here. Uh, this one, and uh, and the and the horns, horns here. Where are you? Look here. All right. It's basically this. Um, the 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 entire. Q revolves around this um, shape. Pam 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 pam. So it's down 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 up sort of thing. Down down up, and that's what it does. Sometimes I use this motif, um, and I change the intervals a little bit, and it's all around the Q. It's in it's it's in the way I um, I organized it, each section. So for example, it starts with this. So this section is not tonal, but it's around this central note. Right, the next section, and maybe it's this one. The next section is gonna go down um, one, two, three half steps. Right, the next section is gonna go down, and that's the entire piece. The next section is gonna go down one step, and the next section is gonna go up one step. And the entire piece is this. Um, uh, there are other times where where um, a passage, like a two, three bars passage. It's organized with sort of like this this move, and that sometimes I changed it. But for example, this this part here, the 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 way the bass moves and the chords in this, it's also, it also comes from from there, right? When we look later on, when we look at the at the bass note, it comes from there. So so that is the center of everything. Um, now when I presented it, I wanted to be. To, for it to stand out a little bit. Let's see how it came out. So we can hear it with the horns, but we have it introduced it with um, a weaker section. It's not a weaker section. We've got it's it's the violins, the, it's the violins, it's the the low register, is the violins and viola section. Uh, but th that section with big orchestration doesn't have the projection power or, or the weight that the horn section can have. So I introduced it first with that, and then I repeated it right away after that. Once the sort of like the listener sort of starts getting used to it with a, a bigger, heavier section, horns and cellos. So so it comes here, it comes here first time, and then repeated with horns and cellos. So let me just uh, cellos here and horns. And um, and um, and woodwinds tutti in the mid low mid mid register. So this guy here, this one here, and this one here, horns. All right, just short notes. 
That's it. All right, let's move on to the next section. So it sounds like this. All together sounds like this. All right, one more time this section. Um, so the way I usually compose is it's like, okay, I've got this idea. Let, let, let's say that I'm in the middle of the key. The way I compose is I'm, I'm, I'm composing and then um, I need to comp I compose an entire sec an, uh, the, this section, I orchestrate the entire thing and then I move on to the next one and then to the next one. It's not like I compose a two minute piece and I've got, yeah, I don't know, the melody or whatever and then I start orchestrating the entire thing. I go section by section, like so like two bars at a time or eight bars at a time, right? So I compose and I usually think a music as um, layers, right? And to me, it's not like melody counterpoint. Usually, it's more like outcome oriented. So, what do I need to do? So, okay, I need to create movement or a motor or energy. It's like, and then I create this energy layer or movement layer or aggression layer. Then this another layer that sort of like creates movement. Okay, I need to create movement or I need to create background, whatever. So, my three main usually layers are are direction sort of thing. Where are we going musically? Is there a motor energy? Do I need to create that? And then background, do, I, do we need anything? Back? And then bass, uh, ear candy and stuff like this. But I come up with, I, I'm done with this one and then I have to compose the next section and I think, what do I need? Do I need contrast or do I need continuation? If it's continuation, the texture is gonna be similar. If I need contrast, texture is gonna be very different. Once I've got this one and this one, then I think about connection. I need to connect these two or, or not. If I want more contrast, no connection. If I want, you know, um, one section to fade into the next one, then transition. In this case, we've got a transition and we've got this with we tonal rips. These guys here. Sometimes um, one doesn't work and then, so this one sounds like this. All right. And this one sounds like this. Right, so this one gave me the effect, but I also wanted to reach higher. And um, but um, it, when I had this one, it sounded a little bit too weak. I wanted a little bit more body in that tonal rip. So I added this. This is um, holy. Uh, this is what is this? Orgy. As Hollywood wins. Um, all right, so that's what it is from scene samples. All right, and that's that's a recorded riff, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of you can see it here. I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, this guy here. One more time. This guy here, and it is recorded. Yes, it just. So I just put these two notes and uh, and uh, that's it. Um, now, the and the, the reason why whenever I kind of use pre-recorded things because there's no way I'm gonna. This is obvious. This one is obvious. There's no way that I'm going to be able to uh, write something that sounds similar to this with the staccato notes. It's just not gonna. It's because just the, the transitions of flutes, oboes, um, when they do fast notes, um, they don't nail perfectly each note. And that's desired, that's the human type of imperfection that makes the music sound better. Um, so there's no way that we can replicate that with samples. So whenever possible, I use performance type of patches, um, pre-built timpani swells, um, a tonal rips, um, piano to forte to piano swells with the strings, right? There's, I, I said this many times, but there's, it's, it's so much better um, a musician that they've been trained all their life to make that instrument sound the best they can. They bought the most expensive instrument than ourselves, trying to replicate what it would sound um, in every single instrument or section. We can get, it's just um, whenever possible, use the, you know, the, the, the emotion that the musician is able to imprint in the sound that you are able, that you aren't able to do most of the times and especially using samples. That a sample at the end of the day, it's a reduction a simplification of what a musician can do 
so we can actually fit it in a hard drive and make it usable. That's what a sample library is, but doesn't give you more than a 10 or 20% of all the detail that you would get if you would have that instrument in your hand. So that's something that we have to understand. Um, all right, cool. So uh, uh, moving on. All right, so this section um, with, uh, with Dennis Sands mix, uh, this came out very well. The, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't able to achieve what I wanted to achieve with this, but basically um, this is what we've got. We've got this guy here. My idea was, uh, my idea was, let me just show it to you. So my idea was, was um, high strings, bada bada bam, doom, hit. Um, so I, I was orchestrating everything. I was making a space so we so we could have the strings. This guy here. I'm talking about this. Um, and I the the, the, the this is um these are this is the first. Uh, orchestral tools library um, or casual still orchestral string runs um, and they just pre-recorded again using pre-recorded um, performance type of patches this recording it was uh, it, 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 it was pre-recorded and so you with key switches and all that you can you can access all this pre-record but it's a little bit of a pain because you are not actually writing the notes but it, it makes it more believable right it feels more like a real violin section performing those that fast figure um, and so that was the idea, but it didn't cut through the mix the way I wanted. And you see, it's um, you see, it's in octaves. Where is it? Here, it's in octaves, so we can hear it a little bit better. Then I have let me just F three. Where is it? Where is it? My mixer. F three. One more time. Ah, there we go. Um. All right, so so the idea was up here. I wanted to cut through the mix a little bit, and then that, let me just get rid of these. Hi, and then the section changes, and then I wanted to hide it, and then going up, sort of thing, goes like this. So, so that's this section. You can see how it, is, it has three sections within it, uh, but it sort of continues with the same idea. So it's three sections are very similar. We are changing orchestration to create a little bit of contrast and evolution. Let's let's go one by one. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this here, and I'm going to show the tracks in the locator position. All right. All right, one more time so you can identify the different layers. All right, so we've got heat, 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 heat. We've got a para bam, para bam. -bam. We've got uh, low hits as well, and then we've got these guys here that are doing sort of like the fourth layer of counterpoint. It's not melodic counterpoint; it's more like hits counterpoint. It goes like this. So, so look at this one here. I'm gonna make it bigger. It's basically uh, horns. Court. This is guy here, right? A triad chord. It's not like major chords, a little bit darker than that, but um, the effect is this. And just this guy. Um. Now I wanted. I. It's it's the fourth layer. It's in. So it's like. I wanted. I. I wanted thin. I wanted. To, I want. I want the sound not to be too big, so I'm not gonna use a 12 horns patch and play a triadic chord, right? Because it's gonna sound like 36 horns, and that's not what I want. I want it to sound. I want it to sound a little bit smaller, so it doesn't take as much space in the mix. Uh, and so it's a two horns patch, all right? And the result is this. Right, and in context. All right, 
with a little bit of help with percussion and all that. Um, we've got the trombones also help, helping here. Let me just open the trombones. So trombones down here, right? The trombones, in this case, it's a, a trombone ensemble, but it's but but they wanted to keep a realistic sound when it comes to to this configuration because I didn't want it to take too too much space. So in in uh, uh, horns and trombones. All right, and then one more time. All right, and something that we've got creating energy here is this um, Omnisphere pot that comes here. So this basically is just um, a, a low bass pulsing patch and I went into Omnisphere and I created that um, this the seven eight because th this piece is in seven eight, uh, or whatever, right? And you can see the. Let me just show you the rhythm here. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this. This is the accents, right? You can see it here. These are the accents, right? If we were to solo these. Um, anyway, and so whenever we are using um, like pre-built like um, like pulsing bases and stuff like this, if we are using an odd rhythm like this, um, gotta be you gotta be able to go in there and 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 have the accents where they should be. Otherwise, it's not gonna help the music. And so we've got this down helping and creating that. <laughs> And then it's gone because everything becomes small, right? So you've got this ton ten tire or dan, which is an inversion of that motif. Ton ten tire or dan, tin tire don, ten tire or dan, tin tire don, and we've got. And so we've got the bass. Uh, this bass hits. This bass. Let me just go here. Yeah, I'm gonna show these tracks. Right, what do we have? All right, so we've got uh, we've got the piano, and then we've got the covering the melody, and then we've got the piccolo. All right, All right here coming in here. All right. Adding a little bit of something there, um, and then we've got the uh, the bass. Where's my bass? Here, bass. So, bass comes in here. Now we created a lot of space. It's a very transparent arrangement at this point. So having a very uh, soft bass, it's gonna cut through the mix. Now, so this this, this guy here. Now the bass has a little bit of question and answer as well. Uh, so it goes here with with the double basses pizzicatos. So we've got an electric bass, electric bass, plus double basses pizzicatos. All right. Forget what I said about. The question and answer is here with the sub bomb here. All right. And finally, we've got the, no, okay, here, sub bomb. All right, so sub bomb is this guy here, all right? And then these are the electric bass and um, double bass pizzicatos. And the double bass is there just to extend the low end of the double basses pizzicatos. And that's how I'm gonna treat the mix afterwards. The mix, or, or Dennis, it's gonna select which is the lowest instrument. Um, and it's gonna give the low end weight to that instrument. So when you have something like this, um, it's not to make the bass more boomy. It's just it's to extend because the low frequencies in the double bass um, is something that it's not that content is not there in a real um, double basses section. So an electric bass has more low end content. That's why it's there. So I can then so that support and during the mix I can cut a little bit the low frequencies of the double basses 
to make space for for the double for the um, electric bass. <laughs> So the, the reason why we are able to hear those very subtle bass notes is because the orchestration, because I orchestrated it that way, make it very transparent, lightweighted, so when I've got these subtle boom, boom hits, we can hear them. Next section. Let's let's look at the transition for a sec and how we got there. So sometimes when we think about transitions, we think like a cymbal roll, timpani roll, whatever, or um, or stinger or whatever, um, whooshes. Uh, uh, I think. To me, one of the most effective things is just having a melody there that lands in the next section. Next section. It just makes it. It's just a. It's just a. It's just we are tricking the listener um, into a, using a direction element that's telling your ear and and your perception. We are going from here to here, and when the, we get there section has already changed so doesn't feel as contrasting no matter how contrasting it is and a uh, you know a whoosh or a stinger or a timpani roll or any type of swell um is the same thing um it's telling your perception clearly and easily we are here and we end there section change put a melody Sometimes it can be effective if the melody is designed to clearly take you from here to there, and the, and 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 the melody is here with uh with the piano. Um, and then boom, um, it goes with the strings as well. Goes up 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 and it resolves right. One sec. All right. Any questions? Is is that just piano that's playing the melody, or is it doubled in the flute? Double in the flute and double with the with the strings as well. Gotcha. Thank you. And piccolo, I think. Uh, let, let me. Piccolo as well. Without the piccolo, actually, good call. Without the piccolo, it doesn't cut through the mix as well. This is the piccolo. Without. It's there, but not as much. Now the piccolo. Gotta be careful, right? A little bit louder. And alright. All right. And then next section. Next section is um it's um it's fun. And here's where most of the close strings come in. Pa, 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 pam. It's uh, the motif, the clearly motif. Ta, 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 ta. Again, uh, slightly different intervals, but it's the motif here again. So now the same. The same um, omnisphere pulsing bass that we had earlier. Same, same volume, same everything. All of a sudden, we can hear it more clear now. Why? Well, because the orchestration it's more open. It's uh, sorry. It's 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 a little bit more lightweight. Is the section that I'm talking about. So we are just creating a space here. Just we're just making things as transparent as possible. So basically, we've got the strings doing this. Uh, I'm gonna select these strings and these strings.
All right, so pretty close. So let me just uh, go one, one, one by one. So first of all, uh, pretty close sounding. Still, remember, remember, it's close. It is close, um, but it has a little bit of room. So it's not like we recorded this um, in uh, in a in a very small space. This is Sony scoring a stage, just close micing a little bit of room, but not the typical symphonic sound. And um, it's gonna go. What? One second. One second. Where is this? All right. Interesting. Um. Well. So. Um, so yes, and it sounds like this. Close sound again. Now, understand this is a sound that if it stands, if it sounds, it sounds nice, it sounds clear, has detail and all that. It's the typical sort of like strings. Yeah, it's like the violins one section. If you were to be close to that section right so it's a very close uh, mic now if we make this sound too loud it's gonna make everything else smaller so gotta be careful with that just because the farther away the mics the bigger the more symphonic the, the, the more epic the more cinematic the sound the closer the more detail but then the we are losing the size it just it just how we interpret um size All right So the first, the first part, it goes with um, these violins here. These um, as are Spitfire symphonic strings, and I mixed them in a little bit. So I've got the close sound and um, the Spitfire bigger room type of. Then, because I wanted to create that contrast, like farther away strings, closer strings, right? And um, why do I need this? Because I'm bringing new elements that I need to cut through, right? I, I'm bringing these elements here. Right, so it's, everything's very small, everything's very transparent. Um, it's balanced correctly though. Uh, so you've got the, the, the bass, the pulsing bass. Atmosphere pads, pulsing bass, um, and then we start adding elements, then transition to something bigger. We wanted to, I wanted to create contrast, so I decided I'm gonna go small, transparent, close, and then I'm gonna go big, symphonic again. All right, now I'm gonna bring down the volume. Um, let's transition. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move to the next one. So we've got this part here. That is um, a little bit um, unexpected and um, not just in the transition, but also in how it progresses. This part, I'm talking about this part. So we've got more harmonic changes than before. We've got uh, going up in tempo. We've got an instrumentation is slightly different. So it's unexpected that it's, it's jarring. It could be jarring. Um, it did is somehow um, what I did to help transition from the other section to the next one um, is uh, this horns melody. Without it, um, the transition is it, it's it's even it's more jarring. That's it, right? That's basically it's resolving that. No, that's what helps connecting the first section with the next one. So um, most of most of what we've seen, um, I'm, I'm using the same elements here. Maybe there's a little bit more percussion weight here. And uh, the the new thing that I brought in are the trumpets. I'll show them in a second. All right. All right. So transition elements. We've got the horns. We've got the string runs, as you could hear. And uh, let me just show this. All right. Cool. Runs are here.
Sorry, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to do this. So key switches to position the, the run, and then this is the run. Right. So and this run gets support with um, cymbals well and, and many other things. We got, I've got the arp as well, doing this arpeggio here. Sometimes we've got um, one thing that, that works very well is when we have elements that help transitioning from one part to the next one is having them continue into the next part, not just transition and that's it. You see that in the in the in the arp is helping transitioning and then doing something else and then disappearing. Right? It's just right. Otherwise it's like what, what happens is like we build this transition that brings up the volume and the weight, your casual weight, and then it goes away and the next section loses power, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and, the, and we can't have um, the, it, you know, the Hans Zimmer, the, the Hans Zimmer track, six minutes of music, always growing, growing, growing. It's not as simple as it seems, right? Maintaining or the ADM track that always seems to, you know, be going up and up. It, it's not as simple as it seems. Right. Uh, if we start adding things, there's some there's a moment where we maxed out the amount of things that we can put in the the, the size of the orchestration and everything. And so, when you the it's an effect going from one section to the next section. It's an effect um, that increasing power, increasing weight. But that, then we have to sort of in a subtle way remove that. So if we have to wait it to go away a little bit longer then so it's not noticeable then we will have to do that that's that that's what i'm doing with the arp and also with um with the horn right this is the note that the, the, the transition is here the note stays right till the next transition almost all right cool um what yeah so trumpets trumpets mm. basically this it's carrying the the direction of this <laughs> all right just a couple notes um trumpets are hard are hard to make them sound um realistic sometimes um this is more than you would expect. This is actually a. Um, it's not. It's not solo trumpet. This is an ensemble. So it's three trumpets. So at some point, it, 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 there are twelve trumpets. Sometimes uh, the solo trumpet doesn't cut. Doesn't. Doesn't. Doesn't sound realistic uh, or believable. So anyway. Then it's brightened them quite a bit. Um, these trumpets, he he cued them with er EQ and used the the er knob to add quite a bit of brightness to these trumpets. All right, all right, back online. Let me just mute the Facebooks here. All right, cool. Uh, next section. We move to the next section. Mm -mm. basically a swell right so you've got the what i would what i would mention is i worked with the strings starting with the with the closer sounding strings right and then as you can see i just started adding more of the farther away and farther away you see here close farther away farther away and the smaller sound but adding weight and farther away increasing the size of the string section and then adding some of the Violins one to hear. This is even a um, this is a Spitfire symphonic strings. Even a, it's to me it sounds bigger than just because of the Air Studio room sounds bigger than the Sony scoring stage, which is big but more controlled. And so and so adding this at the end. But just see what what I've got here. That 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 are eight eight notes and here just quarter notes because if I if I did eight notes with this much room sound, it would make things muddy. 
Um, the result of all this uh, for the strings part. Here you go. Uh, in, in context, I've got this. Th So ta 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 again transition ta ta tan this horns doing sa ta tan part I think it's this guy here ta ta tan in octaves just two transitions like ah they don't connect it's like pa pa pam all right connection just force the connection a, a good motive like um uh, uh, if if you have motive purposely well you you get you get the idea um and the support the support in the in the low end is this this downer here it's sort of like typical trailer downer let me just isolate it for you now i like this part this part at the end and so i think i automated it yeah to go up quite a bit so we can actually so it provides this low rumble um hybrid type of sound Next part is just um, let's, let's let's take a listen for a sec. All right, so this part here is just trying to to create more chaos in this section. So um, and the the way I try to do this is tempo change. Tempo change, um, signature change, um, in terms of orchestration, um, lots of changes in terms of orchestration and contrast, and the result was this. So I'm just talking about these four bars. So it's, it's um, the the motive. The motive is similar shape to down up in this case goes up down ta 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 right so i'm gonna skip this section it's just a, a lot of different orchestral elements going on and sort of like overall building a little bit to this part here which this part here i'm gonna move here till the end and we are almost done See this part, um, it's a, uh, it's, it's more sim it's more symmetric. It's easier to understand. It's less contrast. It's basically, uh, it's basically pop up. So it's high, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, 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 low, and then just a, ta, 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 type of thing, right? And then the same, th and then just copying and pasting, moving it up half a step or, or two steps. Don't remember. Um, and that's it. Let's take a look at this. So we've got. So the 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 high staccato notes got the um, strings in octaves. So what you see here is two octaves, but you are what we see, in in uh, in reality we've got three octaves because each one of these is actually an octave. This is Albion. Um, I, this 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 one in particular is Albion. Sounds sounds like this. And so, well, whenever I want to string in octaves or tri triple octaves, I prefer using a patch that was already recorded in octaves because it gives a more realistic um, representation of what violins in octaves means. Uh, if you've got the staccato notes and you just perform octaves, it's going to sound more like an orchestral mock-up. It's going to sound more like produced because those staccatos are going to be more perfectly aligned. Um, the size is going to be bigger. Etc. When you, we've got the strings playing in octaves, the 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 size of the section gets smaller. Violins, DVC in octave, um, 
the performance is usually not as perfect because it's easier for them to perform one note and them all hearing the entire section and tuning to that note than octaves. So there are a few things the, the so there are things that make it different. So in this case, I used it to to get a truly big symphonic type of sound. <laughs> So we've got this and we also have the, uh, the trumpets here. So we've got violins in octaves, violins in octaves. Um, I've got um, the violins again, adding more weight, the, the, and the unison, but doubling the violins in octaves. Um, so that's the violin one, violin two, down an octave, and then um, this is just background. And then we've got the trumpets and woodwinds in octaves and unison. So big sound as much as, as possible and, tr and trumpets. So we've got the, the, those are woods um, and piccolo here. And so here's the thing with piccolo. That's something that I learned from Messian. Um, um, the piccolo is performing this, the, the first note. And also, like the, uh, the note is this, this the, um, the C sharp. Um, it's doing also a, a note up a uh, half step. So a semitone up. And the reason is it creates this dissonance at the very top of the orchestral arrangement. And that makes your orchestra sound bigger. So it's just adding that half a step up at the very top and it increases the size of the orchestra when you've got the orchestra tutti as loud as possible. So because the problem is that the piccolo always stands out. So you gotta make sure you've got the orchestra tutti. So what we've got here is high string in octaves, high um, brass in octaves. Um, we've got the, the piatti, we've got so much going on. Um, and then we've got the piccolo. So we've got woodwinds in octave as well. And then the piccolo doing that out to that note. Up. And usually what I would do is the piccolo doing that note, just that note up, up as, but it didn't work the way I wanted. So I added it too, because, because I, I wanted that when everything sounds perfect, we, we sometimes need some extra harmonics to make it sound bigger. That's what this is doing basically. Um, and I wanted this lack of definition in that note because if I just had this, it was too clear um, that the piccolo was doing that other note and it wasn't working. And so I needed to blurry a little bit the sound of the piccolo. That's why I added the second note. Um, are they in semitones, Mark, or are they in tones? Uh, in this, so the note that everyone else is performing is this C sharp. The right. piccolo is performing the C sharp plus the D. Okay. So the semitones. Semitone, yep. Gotcha. Sorry. Right. So we talked about the pa pa pa. The low notes basically low stuff going on, right? So we've got, as you can imagine, the low brass in this case is gonna be monster brass. We've got a timpani, we've got a grand casa, and we've got the piano as well, I believe. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, so we've got a timpani, timpani hit here. Da, 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 da. Right, so we've got a timpani hit. Uh, I've got the, the soup bomb adding support. So, uh, but it doesn't go with that hit. Um, it's got the timpani hit. I've got the, the, the monster bra. Yeah, so the timpani hit. Let me see. Sorry, the timpani is it's, it's doing a counterpoint, as you can see here. Actually, a uh, rhythmic counterpoint. All right, so you're just there to 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 add complexity. But then everything else, it goes with that hit. We've got the bass drum here, the bass drum. We've got the um, the soup bomb to enhance that bass drum. So the bass drum sounds like this. Right, the, the soup bomb is just very, very low type of soft heat that enhances, expands the uh, the sound of the, uh, the the low end of the Grand Casa. The tam tam just adds the part. Now, as you can see, how it comes a little bit earlier. 
Because like when the the um, the tam tam you hit and it's like, and so I wanted the 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 high point of that effect to be aligned with the low hit, and so that's why the note goes a little bit earlier. Piatti. And th this is this is another thing. Usually, when uh, with with low hits, it's uh, the effect of the low hit. Um, it's not all about low instruments. Sometimes we need a little bit of something that adds definition, right? So the piatti is there, letting us know that the low hit. It's just enhancing the low hit a little bit. It just makes it more obvious, right? And so we've got the low brass. Uh, it's the lowest note, I think. So, and the piano. Piano actually has a bigger range than the actual orchestra. So, um, so just a piano hit helping there. And this is what we've got. Right? So without the piano, so one more time. With without. Can do this part. With. It just it just adds that it's very typical cinematic, um, even old school, but it adds that 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 extra um, attack. And um, now you have to mix in the right volume. Too much is gonna make it sound smaller, and. Uh, too low, you're not gonna, it's not gonna create the effect, okay? And uh, and then again, transitioning, going out, that, 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 that. so it's basically just the strings and 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 brass going up, and then the uh, the all the tonal rips with the with the woods, right? Same thing, up a up a tone, and that's it. So what we've got here basically is the the highest and the lowest harmonic of the violins. Um, let me just bring this key. Mm -hmm. As you see, um, the harmonic comes a little bit earlier. Um, so when the so when the uh, cliffhanger happens the note is there already. So violin one harmonic. Like the highest you can get. Um, it makes it less precise. It just it's harder and sounds like this. It's not a, it's not as pure. And then mixed with one that's lower. So go here. And then this one. It's more like a more reg regular, lower type of violins two harmonic, and then the two of them. So the piano doing para para ram para para ram, and and then we've got the the celesta doubling with the piano. Celesta in the low register because I wanted to create this this texture, this sound, not not the sound that's typical in this case. So we've got the celesta, the piano. Piano's doing this, just the notes. The shape, shape in this case in inversion. Now, um, I played with reverbs with the piano, right? Uh, so in this part, sometimes I, I wanted a piano with more reverb. In this part, I wanted a piano that sounds drier. It's got, so we've got the piano and the celesta. The two of them sound like these. The celesta is in the low register. I wanted to create this effect. Right. Um, typically, the celesta is here. So 
you bring it down here it sounds different and that's what i wanted i wanted this this type of sound i, I didn't want the typical magical you know nice sounding celesta uh, so that's what i did yeah <laughs> And the ARP, adding this uh, sort of like resolution, right? Bam, bam, bam. And this is the first time that I allowed myself to sort of um, like show a, like a diatonic, harmon typical harmonic pro progression, five to one sort of thing that I tried to avoid throughout the piece because I, I I didn't want any resemblance to um, any other style. So action, high intensity, um, just very contrasting, unexpected, non-tonal, etc. But in this case, it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna end this track five to one sort of thing with the ARP. And then this, um, I wish I put this a little bit louder. Basically, this um, cold piano from Audio Imperia. Uh, what is this? Cold piano. Evolution. This is the typical trailer note at the beginning of every trailer. Yeah, and then stack of strings. Uh, but I just wanted to end with this note, and I see I play with the piano. This this piano sounds uh, closer. Right, that's it. That's the piece. All right, then let me know if you got any question. It's interesting because after coming out of that seven eight section to the common time section, it's almost like common time feels like like what is this. Yeah. You know, it all feels like, you know, abnormal. Yeah, yeah. We sort of like we got used to this odd rhythm all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Did, did you use a xylophone anywhere? The xylophone to double the, the woodwinds at all? Maybe, maybe, but no. Mm, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Not, not in this. Let me see. I don't think so. I don't. I wrote this piece three months ago uh, or two months ago. No, I don't think so. No, I didn't. Yeah. It would have helped. Some at some at some point. Some parts of the piece. All right. So. Mark. Uh, yes, Molly. Just wanna say that it was a great class and I really loved it. Um, Thank you. I do have a few uh, quick questions. Um, so when you do the, like when you layer, like say for the same articulation, like at the beginning, the short strings, you have, you layer like multiple tracks. And so when you export it for mixing, would you, mm. Would, would, would it be one stem or multiple for that? That's a great question. To me, it would be a stem because- Just one. To me, it would be a stem. Um, I would okay. have the short high strings and the short lower strings. That's it because okay. I created the effect here. I, some parts sound closer, some parts sound far away. Dennis asked me every separate track and I sent him, I don't know how many tracks. And then <laughs> that, part, that part of the course I don't know, it's maybe seven or 10 hours long. I don't know how long it is, but this, he's explaining how he mixed every single track and there are a few tracks. And there are some tracks that basic, that literally are just a couple of notes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I- so, so for example, like this track, like when you export it for mixing, how many stems would, <laughs> did you, would oh. you end up? No, this one, this one fits in, in not that many. In, my stems are always the same. I export these uh -huh. stems here, um, maybe 20 or 30. Um, okay. Yeah. I've got the typical strings high, the string short high, string short low, 
strings long high strings long low that's the max separation for brass it's going to be just brass short and brass long and for wood it's going to be the same thing uh wood short and, um, and wood long that's it then i'm gonna in the brass i'm going to separate the epic horns and epic trumpets the ones that usually play melodies so i have them separated and the brahms as well as part of the brass i'm gonna have separation there and in the strings i'm gonna se separate the string runs that's it that's my orchestra and then any anything that's ensemble type of sound like the my my orchestral ensemble staccato and long notes that goes to ensemble short ensemble long and ensemble percussion for percussion i've got uh, high mid and low and i separate and then i separate the sub bomb and the cymbal rolls and then for the other stuff i i i have the piano choir arp and then auxiliar one two see if, if you've got the stuff that doesn't fit anywhere and i know when i'm mixing that i'll, I'll need to have it separated and that's for the orchestral part. I like separating as well from the percussion, the timpani. And then I've got my trailer, uh, my trailer stems, uh, punches and kicks, hits, downers, effects high, effects low, stingers, razors and shouters, uh, drums, um, like a regular drum set, and then electric bass, synths short, synths long, loops high, loops low, pulsing, pulsing, pulsing high, pulsing mid, pulsing low. That's more of, of like the, 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 the hybrids. The orchestral stems, maybe 20. So, so would you say that no matter how complicated the sound design is and structure is, you, you always end up having just around the, that, like a, the most, you will have like 20, 30 stems, like what you have here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and then you just manually select the one to say like the 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 example i should just not like if you have like six different short violins then you would just manually okay we'll select these six and then we'll put them into the violin short yes exactly everything's okay. pre-routed um uh, everything's pre-routed um i have an, another question um so i was i was just so amazed at like how you came up with all these different textures and like yeah i mean <laughs> right how did you come up with how do you how did you learn it like did you just keep trying and then just just figure it out or like right. and how do you know like when you have okay you are done with the designing this sound like did you have a sound in your head first when you compose and then like when you compose and you you put the note in you're like oh this sounds like it needs a little like a, a little stronger attack and then how do i achieve this stronger attack and then you try to find an instrument you just keep trying until you find it that kind of stuff that's that's a great question uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna show you my like my two go like if you know if i if i need to create a texture like this um yeah how you know how how do i continue um i um Usually I decide first, uh, and it comes from it comes from uh, where do I come from? What do I have before this? What do I need to do next? And that's and that's what I explained already. How is this new texture gonna look like? It's gonna have and what 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 where I am going to put the emphasis? Is it going to be in the like energy? Is the motor what it is or its direction? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so the first thing is. I'm just gonna create a quick texture. Um, so the first thing it's going to be like, where's it here? The first thing is understanding that this is not going to sound tonal, um, and so I'm gonna have to darken these chords a little bit, right? So if uh, like like if we are in C whatever, um, C something, I'm gonna add an, something that creates dissonances and darkness, right? So the F sharp is gonna create a triton, which is the most dissonant one. So um, let's say I'm transitioning, the next texture does something like... Maybe I can use... Maybe I can... So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the time signature. It's going to be a 7-8. The tempo is going to be... Yeah, this works. Um, sometimes I help myself with... Uh, I record uh, something that helps me sort of like uh, get the tempo. I'm gonna quantize this and this should be here and I'm gonna move it here 
couple of times. Yeah, it's gonna last me again. And then Sorry about this. Oops. All right, just just quickly to have, to have something, and then I don't need the. Uh, in Cubase, you can you can do the same thing here, and you can um, you can do this. Oh come on, why? Not working. Anyway. All right, cool. So I've got, I've got this, and I can get rid of this guy. And mm. all right. All right, and then of this style is that for people uh, don't let the listener get used to what you are doing right? if I keep doing the same thing over and over again they get it's like I'm changing all the time that's why that's what that's why it takes a little bit longer to write something like this but, but if I do something like uh, and and see if I try to write something longer than this um, it's gonna be tough and it is what was gonna happen is that I'm, I'm, I'm because I didn't have the ability to write this style like to do all the this music goes high speed here and I'm not able to write eight bars like I would write in a love cue so the trick is not forcing yourself to try to write like long sections but rather do small little things right that's how like like if you watch one of um my live classes it takes forever for me to explain something if you watch some of my recorded like or produced edited classes it feels like it feels like i'm more clever and the reason why i seem more clever and i say more things that make sense and i don't mumble and all this is because i cut all the crap and I put it all together, so I just get the good parts. And so this is sort of like a similar process. I'm gonna be just adding like the small little things, the ones that work, right? So So we're gonna have here uh the snare. A little bit too wet. Maybe yeah. instead of the down beat, tore boom. I move it tore In this, always uh, accentuate the not the down beats um, and syncopation and all these works. Tore but you, but you're seeing how long this is taking me. Tore So we're gonna do see ya ra pa pam. Where's my horn? See, and then we're gonna do see ya ra pa pam. Si pa pa pam. Uh, maybe I can use uh, the trombones with uh, mutes. Si pa pa pam. Something like this. I've got my trombones. Trombones. Uh, trombones. Mute, short, 
One second. Bum, bum, bum. So we're gonna double this with some. The problem with the trombones with mute is that they lose body a little bit um, with this specific mute. I need more intention here. So I'm gonna have more intention in this line itself. And then I'm gonna help it with orchestration. Uh, maybe uh, maybe we go non orchestral and we go taiko. Taiko. Which Taikos? Um, this is an old Which one. Which Taikos do you use? Um, it's an old one. It's a uh, eight volt audio, twelve man Taiko, I believe. It's an old one. They don't, they don't sell this anymore. Hmm. But I think uh, you can get it in a bundle. If you, if you, if you, this guy here, ten men, ten men Taiko uh, stick breakers. If you browse it, um, if you Google it, um. This is bundled in, you know, some someone bought this company, and you can still you can still get this one in particular. It's not, but it's not specially any. What 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 do we Google? <laughs> um, this you you if you want this same library, what you what I would Google is uh, ten men Taiko stick oh, okay. breakers stick <laughs> breakers. Yeah, it's a nine volt audio company, but it's not around anymore. So, so I don't want reverb, so no reverb, and then what I'm going to do is... Come on, let me just record this so I can do this, and now I'm just going to show the tracks with MIDI data, and so I can see where the note really goes. So it goes here. Da, da, da. A little bit more space here. Da, da, da. All right, let's work on this. Um, always try to also simplify as much as possible. Um, Maybe it's gonna be too long. Maybe we can just uh, let the tam tam ring tail sort of thing. Uh, tam tam. And maybe a uh, texture change here. Is that the data bottom? This is gonna be no limiting. Or maybe viola, a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a lot of contrast here, but I'm gonna have a hard time. So I'm gonna write it there and then I'm gonna move it here. 
ti dan dia Dore to ti dan dia Dore to ti dan dia Dore to ti dan dia So I'm gonna now move it here. That's sort of like a trick. And then it's gonna sound like, ooh, contrast. Mark, did you already have an intention while you were like the past 10 minutes or so, like when you were composing this part, did you already have the intention where you wanted it to go or you were just like really just like composing on the fly and like just see where it takes you? Uh, in this case, the, the first part, the mm -hmm. first part, yes. The second part, no, uh, I, 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 I needed, as I said, that I wanted to create contrast. In this yeah section. okay so i'm not using the things that i would use in the and you can see the difference this is more like ta, 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 and this the second one is more fragmented and also bring some of the okay so a high instruments as well um high high pitched longer notes like the cold piano with lots of reverb the high um, the, the the violins harmonics so so basically you did you did have an intention but the intention was you want to create contrast yes. and then you just started to write and like okay how do i create contrast and then <laughs> i mean i could see that if 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 it was me doing the same thing as you do it would take me like 10 times as long the and reason, still the effect that won't be as good the reason why it takes <laughs> but it's because i just don't have enough experience and you clearly know exactly what you're doing <laughs> Uh, the yeah the, the 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 reason why I go faster is um I've done this many times and my and my my template is a tool that allows me to work fast not not something that theoretically gives me option options but then um, truly what happens is that it's limiting me um so you can even though you see me searching for tracks I know exactly what's there what what am I gonna get from that track I've I started building this template in two thousand and ten. So I've been using it for more than a decade, and I, and obviously I add new tracks and I improve it and all that. But um, it makes it makes it easy for me. I know exactly not just where they are, but exactly how to use the instruments. Um, yeah. I know exactly for a timpani roll how long is this one, 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 how long is this one. The swells. Um, so uh, I know how to stop the timpani, know the control the tail, how to control the 
I set these things up, you know, I spend afternoons and evenings and nights just tweaking things. So when I sit down and compose, I can work fast, but don't fool yourself with the idea that I need a template to compose fast. Uh, build your template as you are composing and it's always going to feel like you go slower than name of another composer and um, but the reason why i can go fast here in a class it's because it's a live class and my intention is to move fast so i can share as much information as possible but when i'm composing that i'm looking for searching for that sound then is when it takes me long that's what you don't see the behind the scenes because i'm building and improving and updating my template in that very moment um, so don't, okay. don't, don't, don't get discouraged. Mark? Yes. Um, how many motives would you use in a, in a, in a, a, a cue like this? Uh, two at the most? Um, the, um, I like, uh, in general, I like to keep it simple. Um, for, for something like this, um, one or two, I like, I like the idea of having something minimal. Otherwise, I get just I get lost myself with with my own ideas, and I like to start with something, just one thing, and then evolve from 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 there. Because even though there was one motive in that other one, one main motive, there were other like rhythmic motives and things that you know were were related within the piece. Yes, yes. In this one, uh, in in which one? The like the big one or this example? In the big, in the big one. Yes, yes, exactly. And so the question is like, you said that you got one motive, but it seems like there are one more motives, but they all come from something in common. They, they come from um, either a pitch class set that I defined or a group of notes um, or um, um, a type of, you know, a, a type of chord that's not, you know, triadic major minor. It's, all, it's always going to be diminished. So if, every, if, if everything, if all comes from something that, if there's an idea that connects everything, then you you will not lose the listener. There's gonna be something that makes you makes you uh, makes sure that the listener is not like, I'm wondering where the music's gonna go. I'm I don't even know where I am. Right? It's always gotta have something that they can remind even subconsciously. Oh, this comes from me. You are not expecting for the listener to see, to see all oh, this is that melody in a style like this, but it has to sound familiar. And I'm I'm going to the subconscious mind at this point, not to the like the conscious. Oh, I recognize this motif. Um, but most of the musical material comes from something that I created initially. So if I start with dot it, pop it up, and I know that I've got. A, this interval and this triton and this minor third and etc. Everything else is gonna come from this sort of initial idea. It's gonna be minor third. It's gonna be seconds and uh, it's gonna be. We're gonna have lots of semitons. semitons we're gonna have the tri uh, tritons. So if you everything that you build is in this group of intervals, it's gonna sound similar. And this, and this is just an example. Just an example. Just having that idea. Like what is the core of this piece? And it can go down to motive or even below that. Right. I can have a second or a semitone. It's like, okay, everything is going to build around semitones or whatever. Um, so, so I like to have a clear idea. I like to have, but I, in general, I want, I, I, when I start composing, um, unless it's, um, I don't know, a magic fantasy or love is longer themes, etc. Uh, for a style like this, I, I like to have something. I wanted two things. One, to be minimal and two, to be broad in terms of I can expand this idea. Can I go beyond just this phrase? I'm, I don't, I don't want to use this motif over and over again. Can I expand this? And the idea of a semitone, I'm going to start the everything that I do has to be justified from this semitone idea, maybe. If that would be like the minimum um, motif that you could have. You could have da da dun something like this, right? Um, and you could write the entire piece around these three notes. Um, does it make sense? Yes. On a more trivial matter, um, the, the, the straight muted uh, trombones, was that from uh, Cinebrass Pro? Yes. Yeah, because they're not in Cinebrass. I know that. <laughs> yes, it's Cinebrass Pro. Cinebrass Pro. Okay. Yeah. Cinebrass Four has the... Dang. Cinebrass... Cinebrass um, Quar has the very, very basics. Or like or what you would expect. Um, and a question from here, Daniel. 
uh, I assume you set the hit points markers right after first um, viewing and I notice real strange signatures by do you determine the tempo for each scene just after viewing or of when you are really working on a specific section if I yes good question so if I'm if I'm but if it's a movie um if it's a movie um, um I, I would look at the picture I would set the markers first of all then then I'm gonna start composing and I, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna set the movies I do are very simple that you've got to understand this I do TV movies and so it's it's female lead thriller movie right um there's always the same characters so so I know uh what the music needs to do and generally it's more simple than this so the way it goes is I set my markers I said, and usually it's a 4-4 four, four. and um, it's going to be a pulsing synth or something like this. Um, and I'm not saying that I don't have a space for creativity. I love what I do. Uh, I do not complain. Uh, and I love the movies I work on. Um, but I've done many, so it comes somehow naturally, right? And so I set the markers, I set the, 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 the time signature, and I set the tempo so to, to, to stretch that section so the downbeat of the next whatever section hits the marker. That's it, but it's generally it's not that complicated because I'm going to have a scene, I'm going to have two or three or four uh, sync points. And um, and um, you can, like if I had to write this type of complexity for movies, um, like I just, um, Salil has helped me, uh, composer friend. Um, we've done this movie, he's done a lot. Um, he, we've, we've done this movie in 20 days. And uh, it's one hour, 55 minutes of music. And this type of complexity that we just saw, um, it's a little bit inefficient. It makes you feel proud as a composer, but it's a little bit inefficient. There are ways to write more minutes of music and sort of like for the director ears and the audience uh, to actually, you know, feel some sort of a similar uh, emotion, right? Um, you'll have more pulsing scenes and you'll have uh, less complex time signatures, less changes, um, more effects, um, long like string glissandos, and razors and stuff like this, um, whooshies and just ways to, to write faster music sometimes. Um, when I can negotiate and have my, more time, this is the music that I like. But, um, but it just, and you gotta understand that makes it a little bit more complex. Um, everything, the entire system more complex, the composing of the music, the mixing of the music, the recording of the music this is slightly more complex to record with a real orchestra than um, all the style of music. And I, I'm not saying don't do this or don't do that. It's just understanding what's the budget, what's the time and what is the most efficient way giving these facts and what you want to do as a composer. So yeah, so yeah. I wanted to I wanted to I show a, you. Um, I have uh, a, a final last things, question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Chris. Um, I have just two fast questions. I know that you can answer it like speed. Mm. The first one is why Cubase? Um, why Cubase? I tried Logic, and um, back in the before 20, 2010, I liked it very much. But back then transition Mac from 32 to 64 bit was a mess. Uh, I transitioned to Sonar. I liked this Sonar very much, but at some point I had to work on a project. I was started working on, on Cubase because I needed Cubase, um, build a template and they just continued with Cubase. Um, at, at the point there was something that I liked very much, which was the, 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 the being able to find uh, tracks, which is the search. Mm -hmm. I don't use this anymore, but the hiding uh, groups of tracks, something that Sonar didn't do it that, that well. I tried Reaper, but I didn't get my head around it. And it just, um, QS is just fine. It's fine. It's not better or worse than Logic or than Digital Performer. It's just fine. It's just another sequencer. It does the same things as any other sequencer. Just the, I spent a lot of time here. I've got my template bit built here, and I know to work fast in this environment. But it's not, it's not better or worse than any, anyone else. I like Logic. I like, I, I've used DP also when I worked in other projects. It's just, I'm just slower at this point because I, I have a harder time finding where the button is, basically. Yeah, and and but the the second question is I I know that I bore with this all the time, and I I don't know it, it is Molly was already with me, but then but 
when we will see you compose music on a black scene, I mean, without any music? I wanted to do this in this movie. Um, it's called The Healer. Um, but we went so fast. Um, I'll, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it at some point. I'll do it. it yeah, just... it's a good challenge. I mean, even even for us uh, to 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 learn how to compose in a in a in a little time, in a little bit of time. So um, I would like to see that. Right. I want to see it too. Awesome. The, the... You see, Molly yeah, wants me to live with me. Please. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. All right. The... That's it. All right. All right. Cool. It's um. Um, by the the people working here, I always say uh, no excuses. Um, but I, I was I was going to say the the Danny Sands pre-launch said that we're working. Ex just excuses. Okay, I'll 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 schedule that in, and when it's scheduled, then it has to happen. Right. Mark, yes. Um, what would you recommend to as far as listening for the the style and well crafted and you know not just fluff. Uh, so say again, what, what do you recommend with practicing What would style? you recommend from a, from a listening standpoint uh, of maybe these kind of pieces, these yeah, kind of cues? Um, um, Firebird um, for, uh, Stravinsky, Spallet. Uh, oh, okay. Petrushka, well, yeah. Petrushka. Um, how about, no, but how about for a move in the movie Genoa? Um, yeah, uh, so... Um, If um, the 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 if you want to go a little bit more complex, go uh, John Williams, but don't go for the main themes because the main theme is the is the simpler, more cinematic orchestration. If you want to see a little bit more of the um, uh, interesting background textures, um, then select music from scenes that where the music doesn't stand out that much. Action action scenes. Um, let me see. I'm gonna bring this here. And that's what the good. Um, so be because you guys have access to the compost or film studio style, because you guys have access. Well, either either I am a composer, or even more scores you can find it here. Um, style action high level, and this one is compilation films. Yeah. Um, so if you want scores, you can find them here. And this um, this one is from um, uh, Brian Tyler and Sky Battle. Um, another one. So you can see a few a few um, suggestions of movies and the scenes in, in inside this course. You should have three, I believe. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. John Powell, uh, Born Identity. Movie in the any action movie, uh, all, all these Star Wars movies, uh, or you know, action or adventure type of movies. I think that's um, sort of like the maybe obvious starting point. If you guys have other suggestions, feel free to post it here in the in the comments. But does that does that help? I I sometimes like when sometimes feel music to me. Um, it 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 um it sometimes it helps. It's to, to me, film music is like, it gives me the, the, the obvious answer. It's like, if you do this, it's going to work. Uh, but sometimes it locks me to, uh, locks my creativity sometimes. Um, and so I like classical music in the like post-romantic era because it's, it's where all the film music or at least the earth, like the, like the golden age and, uh, and then John Williams type of sound comes from sort of thing. Um, and then these days sounds a little more modern and uh, it's not better or just more simplified, more sound production. Uh, but it it, it, it's, it it comes and goes and there are waves. So there's going to be a moment where it's going to sound more casual again, there's gonna be a moment that's going to sound more synth again and it's going to go. And then at the end of the day, it's have your own voice, voice and do the things that you like and then find your niche and do. Um, but for this style in general, I like, um, yes, looking at film music, but... Um, but um, I also like to look at the at the classical composers. So that's it. That's what help. Right, back to input and back there. Um, let me let me let me share with you real quick that all these 
Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share this quick and then we're gonna go. Um, all right, so I, I wanted to share with you something that I'd, I haven't put it this way. I was composing the other day and I was thinking the, the music, we talked about the performance type of patches and how they make your music sound better. But when you don't have the performance patch, you have to actually do the, the make the, the instrument sound alive. And I just wanted to share five dynamics moves that I do often that make the music sound uh, a little bit more believable and realistic. And so the, before I explain them, um, just understand that we usually are told to use uh, one, uh, to use modulation to um to do the the dynamics that's that's good and fine but i recommend you use use two at least two midi cc's at the same time it's just gonna enhance the sound even even farther okay uh just an extra layer of volume and with that in mind um five uh five dynamics moves that I do and the first one is what I call the the Lord of the Rings move and basically the way it goes is um, you're gonna use expression modulation and it's gonna go up and down every two chords up the first chord down the second chord right and it's gonna be very simple and but the trick is you're gonna create a little drop in between the first and the second chord right and the third and the fourth chord and it goes like this Gonna go in here. Let me show the show height. Yeah, you see that, okay. If we if we add a little bit of low strings, yeah. mm -hmm. you get the sound. Sorry. I'm gonna add this. And so um so this is the highest strings and uh, I'm gonna record the lower strings. Same deal. So recording in a way that I don't usually record so do you see it all right so typical sound but sometimes we try to do the the movement up and down in every chord or if and sometimes it takes two chords to create the emotion, the connection down, and then the next chord. The very typical, so like the end of the Lord of the Rings when everything um, that happy ending this this time, and, <clears throat> and all the whole short Lord of the Rings saga, super slow strings. You can write a lot of music with this. Um, all right, so this is the number one. Number two is the the double push. Or, or it, it, it works for crescendos. Um, like when you've got this, like the final crescendo and it has to go like this, right? Sometimes what works better instead of, which works great. Sometimes in music, we've got like this for chato, zaras, right? And so the way this is done is using expression modulation. You're gonna go up, a little bit, right? And that's gonna create this for chat or the character that note, the, the, depending the, and depending the faster or the slower that you do this, you're gonna imprint a different character. But za, and then you're gonna go up, and you're gonna end with expression first, and then modulation for the aggression. All right, and it's gonna go, it's gonna do something like this, right? Like in context, for example, would be something like this, maybe. Here. Maybe it's too loud here. Right? 
sort of the thing. All right, so that's the, the other one. The next one is a um, final crescendo melodic. Um, melodies work similar for, let's say that they've, they've got these um, violins one long. All right, so for melodies, I like using um, vibrato as well. So now, if you use two, then good. If you use three, more realism, all right? Sometimes uh, I use this for vibrato, um, and I, I use this one, changes the attack of the... I can overlay. Um, with this, it's another patch that allows me to overlay um, staccato, so marcato, staccato, spiccato, sort of thing, on top of, at the beginning, of the legato note, so I can do faster legatos if I want, or or like for example, I could do like All right. It it may take a couple of days, but you get the idea, right? And so so that's that's the fourth one, but I'm not gonna use it. Um, I'm just gonna use these three. So I record this one so you can see, and uh, in general melodies. Melodies. You want to do that drop as well uh, in between notes in general, depending on the library. But generally, generally it works because the way a musician performs is they are going to add a little bit of weight at the beginning of each note to clearly separate that from the other note. And that's and after that, adding a little bit of weight. It's not that it's for chato. It's just adding a little bit of weight. Usually, if it's a long note, it's gonna have a slow decay, right? That's if you see a violin section performing a slow melody. This is how it's gonna go. And so you wanna mimic that, right? So you're gonna start from down. For example, if you if no vibrato, do a little bit more vibrato. I'm doing this and they're not seeing me. So you that's, that's the result. And you see at the beginning of each note, there's a little bit of drop and emphasis, emphasis, emphasis. And then the longer the note, slow decay, slow decay, slow decay. Okay? And that's what creates this. Like if you study the sections, how they perform, they do these type of things. It's subtle because it's slow, uh, but it's there. Otherwise, it's going to sound flat. Okay? So that's that. Uh, repeated note. Oh, uh, when you have a repeated note, let's say that you've got in this melody, and you've got a repeated note, the way they... A repeated note is um, um, in wind instruments, it's going to be something like da. In the, the more separation is going to be more like ta or pa. Um, if there's like a, if if you want to connect these notes, it's going to be more like da 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 type of thing. If you are repeating the same note, the same note uh, for string, usually it's going to be a bow change. Sometimes there's more separation. Sometimes sometimes there is less separation. Sometimes they can almost connect these two notes. Right? Uh, the piano is different. The arpa is different. Every note is going to always have sort of like the same attack. So the way um, uh, there are libraries. Um, strings like that if you repeat very fast it's gonna connect those notes it's gonna be like a repeated note legato good for you if you have if you got one of these libraries uh cine samples does this i believe yeah. type of thing uh, but if you don't then you, you're gonna do something like this You're gonna do you're gonna do these drops that create the 
the uh, the sort of like the separation. Right? That's that's the number fourth and then long sustain. Oh yeah, and then long sustain notes. For long sustain notes, we tend to do this, right? Sorry. And if it's a static note, we could feel tempted to just leave that note there. Um create variation, create vibration, create fluctuation, create things that move that note, even if it's just, if it's just staying there. And it, instead it would go, it would it would go like this. You would have this note, but then um, record fast fluctuation with uh, expression and modulation. Right. Sometimes it can go up and down if, if it's following um, um, the key or the C or something. You can have something like this. Ah. Right. Or and 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 then for for um, for vibrato, the same thing, but the slower moves. Right? Way more alive, way more realistic. That's it. Just wanted to share this with you. Mark, that was so useful. Awesome. That was really, really great. Yeah, you really answered one of my questions about, I mean, I always have trouble with repetitive notes. And I just like, I didn't realize, I, I mean, it just seems so simple, but I just never, it never occurred to me that I could just hold the hold the note on the piano and then just just do the modulation. I always re I just re re hit the, the key on the piano on the keyboard and it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. It, 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 it means a lot because sometimes sometimes Dennis will explain things and I'm like man this is not obvious like can you also explain that other thing? And he always says it just comes naturally to me and I didn't think I had to explain it. And uh, and I guess this is one of these times where it's like, right? It's like uh, when, when I think, what should I teach? And I think about the things that uh, that I struggle with. And sometimes that there are things before that that uh, that, that come naturally, maybe. Uh, but made a difference. I remember one day when I I was literally listening to Howard short music, and I wanted to write this big, uh, smooth, warm, um, slow, homophonic. How many adjectives? Uh, homophonic strings and like Lord of the Rings sound. And I was focusing on EQ and all that. And it's like, and then I was looking at the, I was listening to the Lord of the Rings um, uh, concert or symphony. Symphony. There, there's a concert they, they they tour around the world, and there's it's, it's in YouTube. Back then, you had to buy the DVD. And so I was literally looking at the strings. What were they doing? And I thought that it was the voicing. It was the and yes, it was the voicing partially. But then it's like, oh, going up the first chord and going down the second for me, it was like a breakthrough <laughs> almost. So, so thanks, thanks for showing that this was useful. Mark, yes, I put this on uh, on the site. Um, there's there there's this con these concepts relate to um, a Tabato, uh, Marcel Tabato, who was an oboist in the Philly Orchestra. And it's all about phrase and note groupings and how how music creating um, lyrical music um, through note groupings, basically. Uh -huh. So it's just interesting. It all applies. It comes back to. Did you put this in the chat? You said did did, uh, did you say that you put this in the chat? Can you hear me? I was I was muted okay. uh, a long while ago. Um, so it, it was probably like maybe in the summer sometime uh -huh. when I put it up there. Um, and actually, there's a I bought I bought a book 
a two book actually book on it. And I, my, I had when I was studying euphonium, my euphonium teacher was very into it, and uh, and so that's how I got introduced to it. And then um, when I was doing this, trying to get my string lines to work, which I still am not there, um, I thought, man, this refer this goes back to Tabato and all that stuff. So there you go. Just, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. It's great. Um, the strings are the hardest generally. Um, if you load them. Um, Mm, I remember when I started, I started with Vienna Symphonic Library and I would love the oboe and the, the clarinet. And it's like, this is easy. The legato sounds good, decent. And then the strings like, oh, this is crap. And it's like, what, what am I doing wrong? It just takes a little bit to, you know, to get them something like the real thing. Because it's not a real thing. It just takes us to do specific things to mimic that sound a little bit. Uh, so Vincent, my question is: the sound of your mockup in live chat is is awesome. How do you make it with uh, which with which tool equipment? Thanks a lot. Um, so I um, I would say I would say number one, Vincent. Number one is uh, the number one is the. I usually start with uh, the classes with what equip. I used to start the classes with what equipment do you need, right? Um, what se what sequencer? What type of computer, right? Uh, and this this is the typical question. It it just gets the class. It's it's um it's fun to talk about gear and libraries. But usually I start now. I start the other way around. It's like okay, this I don't care. Um, it's important. Library to use is important because that's the sound, right? If you're using a free library, it's it's hard to make it sound good because they don't sound that great. Um, but so the libraries are important. But then um. But then it's how you use them, and I've covered this during this class. Is these things that I just showed that make them sound alive? That's that's the the number one thing. Um, and then it's music. When I showed that, like this is the Lord of the Rings type of sound. Look at the voicing. Um, is it, there are there are, there are many choices here that make this sound right. I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna go here. Mm. Oh, here, I recorded it here. Look at this. Look at the choices. The first choice is um, the type of voicing: octaves, open voicing for between the cello and viola, and then simple triad, right? Um, um, mid register. That's what's going to create this warmth, all right? And then, and that's it. And balance. And then uh, after that is when we start talking about equipment and what all the things you do to elevate your music, right? It's the mixing part, but that comes next. You know, if this was, if the voicing was wrong and the dynamics were wrong, there's nothing that I, there's nothing that I can do to make this sound, um, to make this sound the way I want it to sound. And then there are other things that we can talk about. The first thing is I, I, I warm, I, I add warmth to the, the higher part of the strings with, um, with a little bit of EQ, but I uh, th that's something that I that I can do if I want, and when I need a little bit more warmth for the strings, then I use this. Look at the voicing. Just open it a little bit so it's gonna sound more transparent now. It's gonna be like this. Yeah. This is gonna affect more the high register, but I generally don't use this when I am in the high register. So I do things like this. If I need uh, my strings run through uh, a little bit of analog analog saturation, always in this case tape. Those are things that's like this is the final two or five percent. So 
there's a process um uh, but uh, i would say focus on music first make be a, you gotta be able to create a good melody a catchy melody these plugins won't write the catchy melody for you if uh, or you, you get the idea second question can i ask what kind of light rays are you using they sound amazing i explained this at the at the beginning of the of the class the chat the, the the ones that i use the most are these these guys here um here that's it if there is no more questions um i'm going to leave now um i hope no they won't say oh, alicia's gonna kill me all right <laughs> thanks everyone for staying um for um for attending this class i hope it was useful i'll see you in the thank next you, one mark was fantastic thank you thank, thank you, you very much mark all thank right. you so much thank you all right you guys thank you talk soon have a nice week bye-bye bye bye, bye.